Okay, what's wrong with my phone? You're live, Wendy. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm having a conversation with Wendy now, and uh, <laughs> just hello everybody welcome <laughs> she can't get off the phone call uh it's ruth here at artfulstamping.co.uk and we're going to be making a chocolate box because um we were just talking about making gifts for teachers and things like that and she was saying how she's bought some of those really gorgeous does anyone ha do you guys have lindor chocolates in america or australia or wherever you're watching not just in the uk but in the UK, we have Lindor chocolates, which I think are European anyway. And um, they are these gorgeous balls of chocolate with like squidgy centres. They're really delicious. So I have just mapped out. So hopefully I won't go too wrong with my numbers. I've also included centimetres. Get me, guys. So I know I'm on late, but I've sorted the measurements. So I'm hoping I'm going to be able to make two in one go and use a slither of this gorgeous paper that I made a few weeks back. I will link below in the, in the description below how I made this paper. And because it did take a bit of work, um, I'm, I'm quite going to be quite frugal with it. I only want to use a little bit of it. So hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome to my channel. If it's your first time here, if you want to be able to find me again, please remember to hit that subscribe button because it does make it a little bit easier. Also, actually, by like, if you press the like button, it means that you can also find videos. Also, feel free to set up your own playlists as well because that's another way of, of re-watching videos if you find them helpful. So let's see who's on the live. A quick hello to everybody on the live. Better turn my volume down and see who's here tonight. How is everybody? Hi, Valerie, Linda, Martina, and Anna. Hi, Anna. Hi, Janine, Dee Dee, Christine, Christine, Glenna, uh, Sharon, Helen, Subu. Great to see you. Hi, Zoe. Right, so I've already measured out, so you need to cut yourself, if you're just making one, you need to cut yourself a five inch by six and three quarter, five by six and three quarter piece of cardstock, or if you're doing it in centimetres, it's 13 by... Um, oh, I haven't actually done the measurement for this one yet. Hold on. Uh, three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, seventeen. Okay, so it'd be thirteen by seven, seventeen. Okay, but we're going to do inches today, and then I will do the centimeters after. Okay, so we're going to make two. <clears throat> so we need 10 inches across. So I'm going to cut that now because I'm going to do that trick where we score once, you know, for two boxes so that we don't have to do it over and over by six and three quarters. Okay, close that up and then I'm going to start doing my scoring. Okay, so I'm going to score at one and a quarter. So this box is sort of modelled on the candle boxes that I did the other day, but it's going to be much more sort of square and they basically be able to contain about three chocolates in a row. Okay, so score at one and a quarter, two and a half, three and a quarter three quarters and five. Now don't worry about writing all these measurements down. If you want to see the measurements, I will screenshot this. Uh, sorry, take a photo of it rather. And I will pop it on Artful Stampin' Space, which is my Facebook group um, for you to um, see it on there. Okay, so then I'm scoring at six and three quarters there. Now, here we encounter a little bit of an issue. When you're trying to put your cardstock and, and get you get to the six in a bit inch mark, you there are lines on the dark grey area of the trimmer. However, they're a little bit trickier to see. 
So if you want to double check that you've got it right, because I know I want this last score to be at one and a quarter, because there are lines on the on the trimmer itself, you know that all you have to do is actually meet get it to meet up there. So I'm actually oh dear, I've just popped my score blade out of my trimmer. That's not helpful, is it? There we go, rescued it. Um, so I'm following that line down, and I know that that's a quarter, half, three quarters, one inch, and that's my one and a quarter inch mark there. So as long as my scored mark, previous scored mark, meets up to there, I know I'm okay. I'm good to go. Just pop that back in. Of course, if you haven't got a Stampin' Up! trimmer, you, you may not have that, that issue. Okay. Right, so then we need to score the side edges. So I'm going to score at three and a quarter inches there, then four and a quarter. Then I'm going to cut it at five centimeters because that's one done. Okay, so that's that one. And then score at oops, one and a quarter no three quarters what am I talking about three quarters and then four and a quarter right so that's my scoring for two chocolate boxes done So then I'm going to grab my bone folder. Wendy's eating all the chocolates now. Wendy, I'll try and save you from yourself. I was thinking the sooner we can get these boxes done, the sooner you can get them packaged up and, you know, not tempting you anymore. Hi, Gail. Oh, that's a really good idea. Yes, put some white ink on that embossed area on the trimmer and then it shows up. That's a good idea. Right, get my scissors. So this is going to get folded up and stuck down like that and then that is going to be like a little flap that opens up so you can see the the chocolates all right now do we want to make a little drawer like we did before or are we just going to have it so that they can see through the chocolates into there and then maybe just open it up at the side hmm i hadn't thought that far through I'll let you guys decide what you think I should do. I'm just going to cut these little bit notches out. Hi, Christine. Open at the sides of Sharon. Okay. Okay, so I'm not actually going to need this whole section here. So I'm going to just cut that very carefully straight down. Because that's going to kind of like open up because it's, as I said, it's modelled on the, sort of modelled on the candle box. So the idea that it had a, like a little flap to reveal the chocolates underneath. So that's going to go down like that. And then that's going to flap so we need to cut an aperture into this section here and I was looking at my rectangle dies and I did get it out ready and I've got a feeling 
look how perfect that is. So I'm going to run that through my big shop and see how that looks. I'm just going to line that up there. We only need a little bit to go in. We don't need the whole, we don't need to run it all the way through. So I'm just going to put that through and roll it back again. Oh, why didn't that cut? Oh, I didn't, didn't properly roll it through. I only put through half of it. <laughs> I need to wait wait for the two bangs. There we go. So there we go. That's our then you can have it open up like that. How cool. Seal one end and a flappy flappy thing at one end. Okay. Right, while I'm here, I've got the big shot open, I'm going to do the this one as well. And I've just thought this could then be used for doing your greeting on the top there. Okay, is it me or is my camera a little bit like furry? Oh, that's a bit better. <laughs> I think it's because it sits in the palm of my son most of the day, so it gets a bit sweaty. So, um... That's why my um, lens is not always very clear. Oops, I've got twice. Okay, all right. Boxes on here. Right. So now I want to decide where, what, where, how I'm going to decorate it. And I thought it'd be nice to use some of this pretty paper that I stamped a while back. So if I take that measurement there, which I think worked out at three and something inches three and a half inches so if I do uh, three and a quarter by one inch so I'm going to cut this at three and a quarter yeah I'm, an acetate window could work I'm hoping that the chocolates are going to be so packed into there they might be all right but yes you could very easily just put a little acetate window across there yeah mm. right so now I'm just going to cut one inch lengths of this to decorate my box so one One little, one more, seven. So I'm thinking one across the inside, then maybe one across there like that so that that pretty decoration now I was thinking is it worth putting that on there but actually it almost 
it just covers up the, the pretty pattern. So I'm wondering if then it would be better just to put a piece of yellow cardstock and put that over the top um, and then just put your your sentiment or just save this for a rainy day and cut maybe some other little rectangle pieces instead. You know what? It's up to you. I, I'm just going to, you know, decorate it somehow now. But, you know, it's just giving you guys the idea of what you could do. Oops. Oh, dear. Glue flying everywhere. There we go. So that fits beautifully just there because we've got a border all the way around that. Grab another one to pop in there and I'm just going to get my bone folder. You know that thing I said about sometimes it's nice to burnish the just the edges of your paper because of where you've cut it it doesn't sort of look nice but here the problem is was that I had already scored it so it's got the paper's already been slightly manipulated so just needed softening off and I'm wondering whether actually corner rounding that top bit as well might look nice as well the only thing about doing little tiny creations like this is that you have to be quite precise and that's not always I'm not always in the mood for precise so I have to really control myself Yes, sorry, I've titled it The Box for Wendy because I've just been chatting to Wendy and she said that she had some chocolates that she needed to make a box for. So that's why I was being cheeky because I knew that she was going to watch my live and she'd see the title. I will rename it afterwards. <laughs> yeah, so for now the, the title is The Chocolate Box for Wendy, but... Okay, I think that's working. So, to glue this all th together, I'm just going to burnish that one more time just to make sure that the crease on that is really tight. So, the easiest way to do to assemble it is actually just to put a piece of bit of glue there and fold that over and just do that. Hi Thea from Tacoma, Washington. We're making a chocolate box, Deborah. Yeah. Oh, sentiment on vellum. Yes, that would look nice, wouldn't it? This is for three Lindor chocolates. So the consensus was that we're going to just glue one end and have the other end where it's it's sort of more openable. So now I'm sure I've seen a way of doing a closure where. Um, it sort of tucks in on itself, but um, I'm not I'm not very familiar with it, so I'm afraid I can't show it to you. I'm sure I've seen someone else do it. If anyone else knows how to do that, let me know. Yes, I'm wondering if a Ferrero might fit in here as well. We might, well, see, Wendy measured her Lindor chocolates so that I could create create the measurements before I went live. Um, so if anyone's got a Ferrero Rocher at home, can they please measure it for me? So, And it's quite nice, actually, because they can sit there and then they can actually have that bit open. I mean, you can give it to them closed, obviously, but it's actually quite nice to have it sitting open. Now, what could we do as a little funky closure on here? Hmm. Hum de hum. A tiny slit on the opposite flaps. What, like in, in the middle, like that? You're a genius, Martina. Hmm. 
There we go. Yep, done it. Right, there we go. So that's that's one done. Now the next one, what I'm going to do is make sure I score that that edge really well because that is sort of. I mean, it's quite nice to have it standing up, but it it's not sitting neatly. So um, there we go. Hi, Sheeny. You're welcome. Um, what's that saying? I've missed some. I've missed some comments there. Sorry, I've had my head down concentrating. I'm just going to do the uh, what's the word? Burnishing. So just be careful at this point here because you've got a thin area. And just take extra care on that. What are you talking about? The grid paper, Subu. The chocolate's already eaten. Yes, it was just used as a measuring guide. Yeah. If the end is openable, you could make the opening a window with clear sheets. What do you mean? This? Yes, we said that earlier. Actually, that yeah, we could, it looked quite nice with a, a clear acetate or something on the inside. Ah, that's good, Anna. So Anna's saying that she used the acetate when she made the tea light box and she found it helped stabilise it a bit. Very good point. Ferrero is 3.2 centimetres all the way around. Right, well, this box measures three centimetres. So we may have to, oh, what a shame. We're going to have to design another box, guys. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, you have to eat it now, Bonnie. It's been used. It's a used chocolate. <laughs> Hi, Cindy. <laughs> Deborah. Um, YouTube has w asked me if I want to show your comment or not. Martina says, Bonnie, do you have a fantastic memory or do you dive into your stash of chocolate? Oh, she dug into Google. <laughs> well done. Well, we could try and make a box for four Lindor chocolates. Shall we see if we can do that? We might make this video a bit longer. But uh, you guys are clearly, you know, up for a bit of fun, so we can have a go doing that. I 
I know what you're referring to, Deborah. It's okay. It's just YouTube wasn't sure what you were referring to. Hi, Serene. I was here struggling with a box thingy, trying to copy what Julie did yesterday. Oh, did Julie Catterwell do a box, did she? I missed that. Right, so just going to show you this nifty trick again that Martina has just suggested that totally worked. If you're wanting a temporary closure. So this only kind of works if you've got the, the flaps need to be slightly more than halfway over. Okay, so I, did, I actually deliberately did that to make sure that it would close. So you do a little slit into the centre and it means then that you can just pop the opposite one in between and then you can do that on the second layer as well. Just pop that in there, like that. And that just makes a really great temporary closure on your box. It's doing it again, it's not um it's sort of wanting to pop up, but there we go. I'm sure for you. I'm sure whoever's receiving it won't mind that it pops a little bit. For a large chocolate bar. You want me to do a box for a large chocolate bar? I did do a box for a bar of chocolate once so I have got that somewhere um, it should be in my playlist for packaging boxes and packaging oh yes you could easily put a little ribbon around that yes that would hold it nice and I mean do would you think I should decorate I've got two more of these left I could decorate this back as well may as well may as well while it's here So what sort of size bar of chocolate, or shall I try and do it if we were doing, say, three Ferrero three Rocher? Do you know Lindor Cresta. Oh, no. What a Lindor Cresta, Bonnie. Oh, yes. Wedding favours. I finally made my first well, Christmas card, said Zoe. Well done, Zoe. Right, there we go. Two cute chocolate boxes. Or for whatever you want to put in. I did try and figure out if these candles would fit. No, they won't fit. So a Lind a, a Ferrero Rocher then is probably the size of I don't know. I was gonna say three of those stacked up. Yeah, that's that's three and three quarter centi oh, three and three quarter centimeters that is. So what did someone say the Ferrero Rocher size was? Um, where's Bonnie's comment? Where's it gone? Where's it gone? Oh or a lipstick, yes. I just read bed back what someone had just said. Three point two. So maybe if we do it for four centimeter, right? So what do you think I should do for uh, three point two? Okay, um, shall I do a Ferrero Rocher box to contain four, or do it like this to contain like three in a row? What do you think? And then I'll actually talk you through how I figure out the numbers with my grid paper. Because it does make it so much easier if you have the Stampin' Up! grid paper. It really does. The construction. Three, as you can buy a set of three in the supermarket. Okay. I, do, I never buy them in sets of three, Christine. What a waste of money. <laughs> I mean, 12 is the minimum. Come on now. <laughs> if you're going to buy a box of Ferrero Rocher, I mean, three, that's like one cup of tea, isn't it? You know, that's it done. 
Right. So 3.2, I'm, 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 although I'm measuring in centimetres, I'm going to design it in inches because it's easier for me to transpose it back again. So, hmm, well, 3.2 is, is that really? But it's a bit longer, so it should have been 369.6. It should have been wider. Okay. So if we go for... If we allow a space for one and a half inches, so we allow that sort of space per chocolate, that will take us to four and a half. Okay, so I'm just imagining that's the sort of size that I'm looking at. So the actual, so this is what I'm going to draw out. So I'm drawing out the, the space of like where it's going to be to start off with. So one, two, and a, what did I say? One and a half inches. Okay, so that's what I figure out first. That's my first mapped area. Okay, so these are my three Ferrero Rocher. So because we need to have one, two, three, four sides to this box plus a flap, we need to times this by five going upwards or down and downwards. And then we also need a flap as well. So we're going to go down. So that's one, two, three, um, four and a bit for a flap. That takes us down to there, a bit for a flap. Because I know some of you, you watch me do boxes and you go, oh my goodness, I can't figure out the maths. Well, honestly, it makes it so much easier when you've got grid paper. <clears throat> so I've got one, two, three, four. So then I need an extra one here for the top bit. Now for this design, you could definitely do an insert drawer. I would say, because you've got a bit of wiggle room to do that with. So I may attempt that. Okay. Then the side areas for the flaps, you need to make sure that they are at least half the size of the, the depth of the box, if not more. So we're looking at three quarters of an inch, but actually to be on the safe side, I'm going to take it out to one inch. So here I'm going to take it out to one inch as well. So although we don't actually need that top section because that's the lid, we do need to come out as far as there and then go all the way down. So I'm just going to draw that line down there now. And up there, up there, and then that line all the way down there. This comes off as well. And obviously you're going to cut your little flaps into here as well. Not flaps. What's the word? Notches. Okay. So then you measure all this up and that will tell you the amount of size that you need. Okay. So that is um, six and a half inches across by eight inches down okay so it's not as economical because you can probably only get one box out of one sheet of cardstock whereas with this one you get two but that's fine you know it's just the price of a piece of card so to make it easier on the brain for when it comes to scoring if it helps just jot down at sort of at the top here where you're actually going to score so this is your zero point here so then you're going to score at one, then five and a half, and then cut at six and a half. So this is a score mark. And then across, um, sorry, no, going down this way, you're going to score at one and a half, then three, four and a half, six, and then at seven and a half. Okay, I hope that's fairly clear. So now we're going to cut our piece of cardstock. 
<coughs> so six and a half by eight. That's a good bit of off cut. We can use these for something else. So then I'm going to score. So this is going downwards lengthways. I'm going to score at one and a half. Three. Four, uh, four and a half. Six. And then we just need half an inch off the bottom there. So I'm just going to pop that in there and score that. Okay. And then just one inch on both sides. Okay. There we go. So that's how we design our box. So then I've got to decide how am I going to cut out these circles. Now, I have got a one inch circle punch and that might be quite fun to actually cut out three little circles. What do you think guys? Do you think I should do that? Ooh, the Ghislaine seashells. Yeah. Now the only problem with chocolates that are not in pre-packaging it means that you have to handle it onto the the raw food if that makes sense and I probably wouldn't recommend that that this is ideally for chocolates that you don't have to handle so Ferrero Rocher is kind of perfect because it just comes pre-packaged and um, that's pretty easy isn't it you can do that and the same with the Lindors as well they're already wrapped so although the Ghislaine would look lovely or G Ghislaine or what are they called G G Gillian G how, how do you pronounce that I don't know I've always, I've always said Ghislaine but it's probably not correct um, hi Trish Oh, yeah, with the whale paper. Yeah, very, very apt. Can you get smaller packets of the G Gillian or Ghislaine or seashells but so that they're in wrapping so you don't have to touch them? Do they ever do them in smaller packets? I love this. Today watching videos, I still don't get metric. <laughs> oh, I've got, I've got such a split of viewers. It's like some who like metric and some who like imperial. Okay, so that's going to get stuck there and that's going to be the flap that opens. Now, it could be that if you decide to do a drawer, you don't need these flaps at all. <laughs> I've just realised that. And I wonder if I could have actually made a box. <gasps> you know what? I could have. Shall we try it? Shall we try and make a box with what I've got here? So the box needs to be... So I'm going to have to do the maths on this. One and... So it's one and a half inches... Oh, actually, just under that. So one and a half minus a sixteenth. So if I cut it where it gets an inch plus an inch minus a sixteenth, so I'll take it to there, plus an inch minus a three sixteenth, that does it to there. So if I cut it at three and five sixteenths across, Okay, 
going to try that. Three and five, six down. <coughs> then across here it will be four and... Sorry, I have to do this sort of in my head. Four, four and a half minus a sixteenth will take it to there. Plus one inch would take it to there, minus two sixteenths. Plus one inch will take it to there, minus three sixteenths. So that would make it two, four, six, five, sixteen, six and five sixteenths. <sighs> Don't know if this is going to work. Might do. Oh, oh my goodness. That's like a hair's breadth. Perfect. Okay, so theoretically, if I score this at an inch minus a sixteenth all the way round, mm, it should be. I don't know if it's going to work. Oh, it might do. <gasps> Anyway, um, one inch minus a sixteenth there, one inch minus a sixteenth, one inch minus a sixteenth, oh, cold my breath. Yeah, you see all the rulers in the UK have both. We're sensible, you see, we have both. Your trimmer doesn't have sixteenths. Ah, ooh. That's a bit tricky then. So here I want this these flaps to fold in that way because I need to cut a notch into there because the thumb notch needs to go there. So I'm gonna cut um what am I doing? Straight down there and then cut a bit out there. Is Wendy still up? Wendy was saying that she falls asleep sometimes during my videos. So I don't know. She might she might still be awake. She might not be awake. So craft with cray. Oh yeah, we have both, but completely ignore the metric side. So are you telling me that everyone in America who then messages me and goes, please can we have the numbers in Imperial? actually does have the ability to figure it out for themselves. Is that what you're actually saying to me, Kay? <laughs> actually, I did it for a Brit earlier today. A certain person who's actually chatting on this chat very at this very minute messaged and said, can I have it in Imperial? And I did it for her. Right, so let's see if this works. I think it'll work. Right, so that meant that I didn't actually need to do these flaps. All right, just saying. So if you're going to do it where you don't, you want a box to come out, you don't need these. So we're going to cut them off. Ah, Trish actually hopes that they go metric. <laughs> that's funny. I doubt that's going to happen. Okay, the only thing about trying to cut cardstock that's already been scored is that your trimmer doesn't like it and the card doesn't like it, so just be careful. It's not happy.
Okay, so I have got a few furry edges, but that's because it was an afterthought to do that. Okay, so let's have a think what we can use to cut this out with. I'm wondering whether to try the circle punch. Um, where's my one inch? Actually, I wonder whether it would be quite fun just to cut a leaf aperture. Oh no, it would be the wrong way round. To make it go there. Could do a flower one. Hmm, I'm not sure. Let's look at the rectangle dies. The only thing, yeah, that would go through the big shot. Hmm, it's a bit tight. Hmm. Just don't know where my one inch circle punch has gone. Oh, found it. Oh, that's quite cute. And then, I'm going to cut a little piece of this to decorate. So that measures, what was that, five and a half inches across. No, four and a half. So let's do four and a quarter. And then we just need one and a quarter strips to decorate. So let's just burnish again just to make sure everything's happy. Now, because this is a wider area, I'm wondering we could use some of those scrap rectangles from earlier. That might look... I might want to put a greeting. But, um, again, it just sort of covers up so much of the stamping that that's not the point, really. I think if you're going to go to all that bother to make that lovely stamping, it's nice to show it off, isn't it? Um, Oh, that's quite cute there, like that, actually, because if that's open, like that, you see how the pattern matches up? Look, see? I love it when that happens by accident. The thing was, 
If I was to think about it too hard, I definitely would not have been able to match it up. <laughs> oh, I've still got the Distressed Edger tool. It's brilliant. If you haven't got one, though, I'll tell you what you can use. It's just your scissors, but be very careful. Just use your scissors and you can scrape the edges of the paper cardstock like this. Look. So we're going for a bit of a distress look, seeing as it's already distressed, we're going to extra distress it. Make it very vintage looking. Okay, so just be careful though, because sometimes if you go too fast and hard, it will rip. You can cut into your paper by accident. So go at a bit of an angle if you can. So you see how I'm, I'm not going straight down like that, I'm going at a slight angle. You've got a bit more control there. Right, there we go. Okay, so now to do the little box. So before I forget, I'm going to just cut a little notch out of both sides, just to be able to pull it out easier. Hi Cindy, nice to see you. Okay. Right, let's see if it fits. Moment of truth. Oh, come on. You should fit. There we go. Sorry, can't see it. There we go. So you can actually get your thumb in there. And I don't know how I did it, but I seem to have creased the middle of that by accident. But... So, this is the Ferrero Rocher little box. I'm going to have to go and buy some now, aren't I? That's quite cute. So, theoretically, you should be able to get that out of a piece of, certainly A4 cast stock. You guys in the States might not be able to get it. You might have to use a separate piece for the drawer. But, um... Yeah. Right. I think I'm done in for tonight. That's it. So, hi, Jihan. So, we've got two little boxes for three small chocolates. And then we've got one bigger box for a Ferrero Rocher sort of start size ish one with the distressed edges because. We wanted to show how to do that and if, of course if you wanted to tie a ribbon around that you could do and yeah it doesn't meet right to the top but i actually think that's quite handy because it means you can get your finger in there and open it okay. with these ones it's um you do have to sort of yeah lift up and do it but mind you have a wider space on that to do that now i wonder if would these fit in? Oh, they're pushing them outwards slightly. 
they do just about fit the two. Oh, look at that. Oh, that works really well as well. So that's another gift idea, teacher's gift idea, or co-workers, or neighbours. I like to try and gift my neighbours something each year, so... Um, actually, I could do a few more of these, couldn't I? For them. Okay. So you can save one candle. Lovely to see you guys. So if you want to see how I did this box, it's uh, further on in the week, but last week. I do have a playlist of four packaging boxes and things, so do check that out. Uh, I will put this video in that playlist as well. And I will take a photograph of these measurements, and I might go over them with a darker pen actually, just to make them a bit more obvious to you all. And I will then put put this on artful stamping space so if you don't already aren't already a member over there it's a facebook group where people share basically anything that you've made you can take a photo of it and share it on the group uh and sorry anything that you've made that has been inspired by this channel so it's a great little fun place to get inspiration from and uh there's so much inspiration uh, over there. So, hi Christine, love the colour combo. Oh, thank you. Yeah, if you haven't, so if you haven't seen how to make this paper, again, I will, I'll link that in the description box below. And you can go and actually find out how I made this because it was super fun. It was really, really good fun. So, if there's, have you got any other questions or comments if not I'll go and take photos and put these up and then right so what's your zero point then. oh no hold on if this is for the draw one you don't need this but mm. should I put it anyway just in case you want to do it so that you can close it I'll do it anyway, because you can always just cut it off. Well, not cut it off, but you can just adjust the measurements if you don't want that section. So that's your optional. So you need six and a half by eight for flapped box. And then if you don't want the flaps, you just take off, is that two inches? Yeah, so it's four and a half by eight for drawer in box. There we go, hope that makes sense. That's okay, Vanessa. Nice to see you all. Followed about making the box. Dot out me on TG. What did you mean, Subo? Oh, on the draw. Followed about making the box. On the draw. Oh, the measurements for the drawer. Yeah, now that was tricky. Yeah. So basically you score at an inch minus, so 17, no, 15 sixteenths. So score at 15 sixteenths all the way around, basically. I'm not even going to attempt to draw it because it's so complicated. 
So you basically just keep turning it and turning it and turning it. So you just do it at 15 sixteenths. 15 sixteenths. Okay. Uh, but then you actually cut your cardstock. at three and is it five three and five sixteenths by Six and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven sixteenths. <sighs> Is that imperial? Yes, yeah, because the uh, an inch is divided up into quarters isn't it that's what you usually use so that's your quarter divisions okay but there are can you see that there are four elements to that quarter yeah so usually we go by eighths so so if we were taking those measurements that would be eighths and then if we're doing sixteenths that's an even smaller, that's in between all those. So four, four sections of four, that's 16. So it, it does get a little bit confusing because you're having to add up in, it's not like adding 10 plus 10 plus 10, it's adding 16 plus 16 plus 16. So it does get a little bit complicated sometimes. But generally, once we get down to the even numbers, we just say seven eighths or five eighths or six eighths or, well, six eighths is a quarter anyway. So, um, yeah, the only problem with my ruler is that it does the sixteenths up to that point there and then it goes to quarters. So it's like, oh, <laughs> it's a bit frustrating. But um, never mind. Yeah, it actually, it says it there. Oh, actually, no, it does tenths. No, it gets very confusing because it does tenths. It's like, oh, that, that's naughty, really. It shouldn't really do tenths because that's... That's yeah, that is a bit naughty. Because yeah, we should be doing them in eighths. So but that's why generally it is easier to do centimeters because everything is ten. It's like fives and tens and you know. But anyway, I'm not complaining. It's just that's just the way it is, unfortunately. Or fortunately. Because some measurements just do better in imperial and some measurements just do better in centimetres. And I'm grateful that I kind of switch between the two, really. So, there we go. Right. Right, guys, have a lovely weekend. And I um, hope you get up to something fun and crafty. I'm not quite sure what I'm doing tomorrow. But um, hopefully getting rid of some of the boxes I've got boxes of stuff to leave the house that I need to post so hopefully I'll get on with that at some point but we're still in lockdown in Wales duh what's this duh seven no duh six no it's day seven Friday it was 6 p.m last Friday we went into lockdown so we yes we've just done day seven so I haven't oh Oh, excuse me, I've just been for walks. I've not been to the shops or anything. So. Oh, that's helpful. Thank you, Glenna. Oh, that's great. Fab. Right, take care, everybody. Lots of love. Bye.